Good morning. And welcome to the community of Holy Cross and our Mother of Sorrows as we open ourselves up to the healing presence of Christ during this Eucharistic celebration. Our announcements. To those who bring Holy Communion to our homebound, please do not present your picks during Holy Communion. See the sacristan after Mass to receive the hosts you will need. Please help our delegation to the Na National Catholic Youth Conference by visiting our garage sale August 3rd through August 5th at our Mother of Sorrows Parish Hall. Please check the bulletin for times. Please join us on August 6th after the 10 a.m. Mass for our farewell reception for our seminarian, David Cataline, who is concluding his pastoral year with our two parishes and will be leaving for St. John's Seminary in Boston. We wish David the best and will keep him in our prayers. May God bless him. For additional activities within our parishes, please take a bulletin home to read. At this time, we would ask you to silence your electronic devices. Let us quietly prepare ourselves for a thought of the word to guide us for the week. In today's gospel reading, the parable talks about treasures. Through God's goodness, he pours grace into our lives, whether we seek him or not. He buries rich treasures into our lives of kindness, love, and his presence, hoping we find them. Lord, you are my treasure. Today, the main celebrator of our Eucharistic celebration is Father Bill Kaufis, our pastor, and he will be assisted by Deacon Joe Placius. Today's processional hymn can be found in the Green Gather Book, number 658, Bring Forth the Kingdom, number 658 in the Green Gather. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raised the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christ, only begotten. 
of those who hope in you without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king, to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. This Sunday's readings begin with Solomon's request for wisdom and concludes with a summation of the Lord's teaching on parables. At the conclusion of the dissertation on the parables in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus states, every scribe of the kingdom is like the head of a household who brings out from his storeroom both the new and the old. Jesus spoke to the Jewish people, well versed in Hebrew scripture. The Gospel of Matthew was pointed towards 
Jewish Christians. Jesus is not replacing what we call the Old Testament with the New Testament. He is combining the best of the Hebrew scriptures with the new way, the kingdom of God. The wise one, the scribe of the kingdom, therefore knows how to use what is old and what is new. It takes wisdom to understand how to deal with the past and the present. My daily prayer is to pray for the wisdom of Solomon. It has not been granted to me yet. There are many people who idealize the past and want to return to life as it was. For example, back in the 50s, everything seemed so good. There are many others who want to reject the past and concentrate only on the investments of modern life. So, in the area of family life, the first group wants to recreate the Cleaver family from one of the first sitcoms of that era, Leave it to Beaver. And the second sees a value in a sitcom like Modern Family. In the area of faith, the first group wants to return to pre to a pre-Vatican II church. And the second group wants a church without any visible structure. How do we deal with the past and the present? As I was researching my homily, I came across a Russian philosopher, Alexandrov Yevashenko, who had this insight. He said, that the trick to handling the past is to know what should be brought with us and what should be left behind. This is wisdom. For example, within the church, we should bring with us from the past, the past devotion to the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, the Mother of God, the importance of Catholic family life, firm standards on morality, and a determination to practice our faith every week. What should be left behind will include the subordination of the laity, the repression of the roles of women in the faith, the glorification of the clergy. I said glorification, not respect. We should always have the highest respect for our clergy and our religious. And what we should leave behind is the diminishing of the study of sacred scripture. We should also apply this to our lives. All of us can look back on our lives and note numerous positive and multiple negative aspects of our lives. We have got to stop persecuting ourselves by dwelling on the negatives of the past. When we do this, we are bringing the past into the present. Leave it in the past. At the same time, it is not pride to recognize the gifts we have been given and to be sure that we utilize our gifts and our potentials and make our talents real, present. So for example, a person went through a period of life when he or she behaved immorally. Then perhaps due to a religious experience, most likely an occasion of love, that person changed his or her lifestyle and became the person he or she is now. He or she said, I'm getting married now. I'm having a family now. I need to be a person of integrity. And that person grew up spiritually, determined to live a new and dedicated Christian lifestyle. It would be so wrong for that person or for any of us to dwell on the mistakes of the past. If sin were involved. Remember, we always have the sacrament of reconciliation, 
and it is given to us to leave the past in the past and to concentrate on the present. On the positive side, a person could look at his or her past and remember how volunteer work for the poor or the sick was so important during high school or college or preparing for confirmation. Perhaps he or she might remember how others could not deal well with a dying person, but how he or she was able to sit down, chat with that sick person, and see the person, not the person's sickness. Reflecting on this, the person says, hey, I can do this, and it is important for me to use my gifts, the gifts that God gave me. I'm going to volunteer as an AIDS buddy or as a hospice companion. This is looking at the past and bringing the best with us to the present. A few weeks ago, I buried a good friend of mine, Father Tim Haran, retired pastor of Holy Trinity Church in Webster. I lived with him as I discerned priesthood. In his funeral homily, it was said that he approached life with this motto, you can do this, we can do this. He said this to anyone who was struggling with a, any sort of a problem. He said it to kids and college students struggling with school. He said it to anyone who came to him for counsel with a marriage problem or who came to him with any problem. He said it to me many times over the years. I'm trying to put this into practice into my own life. You married folks really should do this when considering your relationship. If you are a human being, then you have made mistakes. Leave them in the past. You have also been supportive and caring in your relationship. Bring this into the present. Sometimes a couple will make an appointment with me having a crisis in their marriage. Often I'll mention that the present situation needs to be dealt with. But don't let that, this situation cause you to overlook all the good you have done for each other and the growth you have achieved as a loving couple. Some people are too quick to give up on a marriage and end up realizing what they have lost only after it's too late. Solomon prayed for wisdom. Not a bad idea. It takes wisdom to combat the challenges of this life. It takes wisdom to be a good parent, a good husband, a good wife, a good deacon, or generally just a good person. It takes wisdom to discern what needs to be brought into the present and what needs to be left into the past. Where do we get this wisdom? The same place Solomon received his. We are 25 feet away from the tabernacle. We are 15 feet away from the altar. It is through prayer and through the Eucharist that you obtain wisdom. My dear friends, you got this. We got this. May God bless you the 17th week of Ordinary Time. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and 
God of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. The Lord speaks to us as he spoke to King Solomon. Ask what you would like me to give you. In prayer, let us come to him and seek the hidden treasure, the pearl of the kingdom. For Pope Francis and all our bishops around the world, as they work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord for leaders of nations afflicted by poverty, famine, and injustice, especially in Ukraine and Sudan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working for a fair distribution of food and the resources of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own efforts to choose the hidden treasure of personal faith and prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people to generously open their hearts to God's invitation to serve his people through the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Robert Kowalski and Anne Michelle Labello, who were married this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will share our goods and possessions through generosity and Christian hospitality, especially with the guests who visit our two food pantries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our sick, the poor, the homebound, and anyone lost through mental illness, that they may feel the presence of our Lord speak to them and seek the hidden treasure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Helena Robb, for whom the altar flowers are offered this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithfully departed, especially Nancy Williams, Eleanor Bolin, Robert Gomes, Margaret Ange, Barbara Randazzo, and for James and Rosemary Cosgriff and Jim Park, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. We pray to the Lord. God of provident love, you call people into your kingdom. You make all things work for their good. We are confident that you hear our prayers and that you will grant our requests. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's offertory hymn can be found in the Green Gather Book, number 669, the Servant Song, number 669 in the Green Gather. Oh, 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Then giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Mother of Sorrows, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Grimaldo Santa Maria, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in 
the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I need your help. We have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament every Wednesday in our parish here at Holy Cross from 1 until 6. The people who have helped to set that up and to be present um, for that, there are two people, they've decided that they need a break from that. And so I need your help. I have someone, Richard is going to uh, do a simple repose at 1 o'clock. The clergy and the Knights of Columbus are helping out with, um, we're going to do a benediction at 6 o'clock. But between 1 o'clock and like 4 o'clock, I really need help. I need people to volunteer to help spend time with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. To spend a half hour, an hour, if you can, that would be a great help. For those of you who are on the scheduler pro system, if you could please register for an hour or a half hour, sometime every Wednesday. If you're not on the scheduler pro system, please call the office. I know Nikki and Donna would be very healthy, very happy to help you uh, just register for that using the system that we have at the office. Deacon Joe mentioned uh, a very good friend, uh, Father Tim Horan, uh, in his homily. And Father Horan, I worked with very closely when I was rector at Beckett Hall. And Father Horan promoted vocations. He was a longtime vocation director for our diocese. There are many priests in our diocese who really can trace their call back to what Father Tim Horan said and his advice and encouragement. And so I was thinking also, as Deacon Joe mentioned in his beautiful homily, the wisdom of God. Wouldn't it be awesome? If we at Holy Cross were able to foster a vocation to the priesthood, that happens as a result of people coming and praying before the Blessed Sacrament. So I invite you to come and to pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament for a vocation to the priesthood. Lord knows we need priests within our diocese. So I invite you to think about that and to um, please step forward and offer your assistance with some time this Wednesday and, and every Wednesday moving forward, that would really be a great help. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Today's recessional hymn is number 792 in the Red Worship Hymnal. Go make of all disciples, number 792 in the Red Worship.
to follow.